The Singer Heavy Duty 4452 sewing machine has a buttonhole foot to accommodate doing the automatic buttonhole stitch. Now, buttonholes, I know you might not use them as much in garments, maybe you are, but there's so many things that you can use buttonholes for. So on our Stitching Cosmos online course, where we take stitches, accessory feet, and use them to their fullest, which this machine is totally capable of doing. We'll put links below this YouTube video where you can check out 10 additional videos for free in the course. But look what we've done. We took buttonholes and put ribbon through it. Now, just a little note because I was pretty excited here. I didn't have ribbon that was as wide as I had wanted. I only had this like uh, half size ribbon. So I used a little utility stitch, one that's similar to uh, the one that's on the Singer machine here. And I put two ribbons together with a little stabilizer underneath and just stitched it together so I had a wider ribbon. So that's why there's a stitch in the middle of that. But we just used it decoratively. I mean, how many places could you just add a little cute touch to something else? So we use the ruffle or we use decorative stitches. There's so many things that we have fun with and we do some piping. So lots of different accessories. I hope you'll check out the uh, uh, options for uh, taking that course. We would love to have you uh, learn even more about your machine. So back to the foot. Uh, let's do settings first and then we'll do the, the foot because you get to take a button and actually put it in the foot. So we're on our buttonhole settings. For stitch length, we need to be in the buttonhole range from zero to one. I like to start somewhere in the halfway part. Uh, stitch width, go ahead and set it to six here at the top. And if you want a really pretty buttonhole, drop your tension down to three or even two and a half. What that's gonna do is pull the stitches to the back side and make the top look really smooth and professional. So next, this foot, you see where the little bar is, that's where it's gonna connect to the machine. This lever should be on your left side, and as you push up on it, it opens up. Place the button that you want the length to be uh, done for, and for me with the ribbon, by the way, I just laid my ribbon in there and kind of just set it to this size and then just pulled the ribbon out, but that's what's going to do the size of buttonhole for you. Next, let's go ahead and switch feet. Take this foot off, touch the lever on the back to let it go, and then this foot is going to look like it's sticking way out the back side because it is, and then position this so it can click on to the buttonhole foot. The first buttonhole you do your thread will be on top of the foot. Not to worry once you do one, which we always test one anyway, that this will end up down uh, through the hole and out the back side. So unless you really want to get that down there, I just hold it until we get started. But there's one last thing you have to do for this to be a automatic buttonhole. So right back here, this is your needle threader. If you find, go one little part back, it's magic. This little lever comes down. Make sure you pull it down all the way and then touch push. That's why it says push on it. So this is the lever that's gonna see how big of a button is in the foot so it knows when to turn around. So this first kind of buttonhole is all about seeing if our stitch like needs to be adjusted, how it actually looks. Do you need to add a little bit more stabilizer to underneath your fabric? I've doubled this up. Usually this is fine for this particular options. Now it's going to stitch from here away from us and then back towards us. So the machine will know all the steps. The only thing it doesn't know is how to stop. So you physically will need to stop sewing after it's traveled its whole sequence and gets back to stitching over the stitches we started with. So you'll have a mark of a starting place. Go ahead and position your needle directly over your mark. If you do want to hold on to this first couple, this thread for the first couple of stitches, that's not a bad idea. You can cut the thread short if you want to kind of get it out of your way. It's already done the little tacking stitches at the lower part here and is now starting to stitch the leg up on the left hand side. And then when it gets to the top, it switches and stitches the right leg. So this is a part where you're kind of watching to see where you are overlapping 
the stitches. See how it doesn't want to go any further? So just go ahead, if you've taken a few extra stitches, that can be considered locking stitches. And then just bring your needle all the way to the top. Let's lift our presser foot up and even slide it out. Gosh, that's a good looking buttonhole. So if you were wanting to do it again, you'll have it lined up. Uh, you just need to push the lever that you pushed at the beginning so we can reset and then it knows to start back at the tack at the bottom and then it will click through the different steps and away you go. Now, if you had a little bit of gaps in that first buttonhole, shorten the stitch length. If it doesn't want to move, maybe your stitch length is too close together, make it a little longer. Not by much, just a little bit. But boy, that is actually how easy it is to make buttonholes on this Singer Heavy Duty 4452 soy machine. Next up, let's go ahead and learn how to use the button sew on foot and sew that button onto our fabric.